Hello, hello. Uh, welcome, beautiful people. Uh, my name is Willem Duha, and I will have a talk about red topology and if we really have all the tools we need for that. Uh, first thing I wanted to say, it's like so beautiful to be here. Like it's uh, always surprises me that you can feel so much kindness and love on a software conference. No, that's, that's amazing and I just have to say it. Okay, so before I start with red topology, I want to tell you something about me. My name is Willem Duha. And I've been with Blender for more than 20 years. Like, actually, the application to the art school that I applied to back then was done in Blender Game Engine. And since then, I have did like a lot of stuff with Blender. I did uh, movies. I developed a lot of add-ons, about 20. I did art. I did sculptures. And I did... Uh, a lot of work for the science community, like science visualizations, animations, etc. Uh, here you can, for example, see a screenshot of, of my sculpture, a relief. And for that, uh, back in the days, like many years ago, I developed also an add-on called Blender Cam, Blender Computed Aided Machining. So the spread was quite wide. And while I was kind of working on all these works throughout the years. I, w I had also this problem that I was always creating my materials uh, from scratch, my assets from scratch, so I was missing a library. And that ended up with something called Blender Kit, which is a company that I help to run now with some beautiful people that are also here, and you can meet them here. And nowadays, my job is mainly to care for the people who use this service because we have over 700,000 registered users and there are hundreds of thousands of people downloading stuff from us every month. So uh, it's a lot of work, but still, sometimes I manage to steal some time for myself to do some coding. And this talk will be about that. It will be a bit of a developer talk, but artists don't run away. I hope you will enjoy it too. Okay. So, red topology. Now I need to ask you a question, because you can make this uh, lesson a bit shorter. Please raise your hand if you don't know exactly what is red topology and how to do it in Blend. Good. There are people I can explain stuff to, so I will continue. So, red topology. Basically, what it is like, you create a beautiful artwork, right? It's beautiful in all aspects, but then it kind of sucks, and you need to do it again. That's what Red Topology is about. It's the technical part of the work you need to do to make your, for example, if you sculpt with dynamic topology, or if you are you scanning, or some wild process to create your asset, then sometimes you need to create a new topology uh, that lies beautifully on your original work, and it helps you to animate stuff better, especially for characters. You need good deformations for the muscles, for face, for everything. You need to follow the anatomy. Yeah? And for static assets, also it's very good because you can get better UV maps, UV layouts. Like triangles don't like uh, UV maps, you might know that. And uh, also like you can get better texture baking, like better usage of texture space, better displacements, etc. Right? And in Blender, to do the topology, uh, there are a few basic things that you can switch on, right? You can switch on tweak mode in selection. You can switch on uh, selection of edges and vertices at once. You can switch on face projection. There is a new uh, overlay in Blender 3.6. It's called Red Topology that kind of shows the match be better. And you can also switch on merging of vertices, automatic. And then what's fun, you only use the most basic Blender tools to do your Red Topology. Here in this video, I do just extrusion, and snapping happens automatically because it's already on. And I also use tweak, tweaking, like grabbing the vertices and moving them around. And I create new faces with the F key. Right? So that's the basic red topology process that you can do in Blender. And you can start with it in five minutes, literally, if you know these settings. Then you can use some amazing add-ons that might make your work faster, right? Mainly the F2 add-on that is directly in Blender kind of creates faces in a better way. You can check a tutorial for that. And then there is, for example, B surfaces add-on. And there, is, there are many other good add-ons, like Red Top of Floor or other tools. 
And this kind of help you to add more topology at once to your mesh, like kind of to be more uh, a bit faster. But here, for example, in this video, I try to race myself uh, with using B surfaces add-on that is directly in Blender. You can just switch it on, and it helps you create new topology just by drawing strokes with annotation tool, and it, it, it adds the surfaces. The thing is, like, I kind of never was faster with these add-ons because uh, I believe there is one principle if you do that topology, and that's quite important, and it's also important if you do any modeling, is you need to literally grab every vertex and place it exactly in the position where it's supposed to be. Now we're talking about organic models, right? And uh, with that, like, uh, you can also place the vertex while you are extruding or while you are making it. So, so creating a mesh vertex by vertex or creating like big patches of uh, faces, like the speed of that might be kind of similar in the end. And what would I say as a recommendation for a topology is that um, Basically, uh, you can just learn the most basic Blender tools, and you will be super powerful. I also teach Blender, and sometimes also experienced users, when they actually know all the features of this extrusion and face making, like all these very basic tools, uh, they are kind of surprised sometimes. OK, so but now let's come to the topic of this call, talk, and I'm a bit excited about it to show it to you because I think I found maybe something new. So can some of you tell me what is wrong with retopology? Like not only in Blender, but generally. Time to music. No one wants to do it. OK. Yeah. I, yeah, it can be time consuming. And you can use like QuadriFlow, for example, in Blender or like some remesh add-ons. But these are good for static assets, right? But I think like if you get fast enough, it can be like one to two hours for a complex character. Uh, maybe a bit more tweaking if you are doing the process with rigging and back and forth, you know. Uh, yeah, but uh, it's time consuming and maybe I can help with that, right? And now uh, I will tell you what I think that is wrong with topology, and that is that everyone is snapping the vertices to the surface of the mesh, right? That's, that's kind of old school, and I, I will try to explain you why. So let's say you have a beautiful surface. It's the original surface. You sculpt it, yeah? And you snap vertices to it. That's the blue line. And then there's the yellow line, because you have a character you want to animate. There's also a subdivision surface modifier. And you can see there is a slight uh, distance between the yellow line and the green line, right? There is an error in it. And that's what you get if you subdivide surfaces. And uh, so how to fix it? Like if I ask some artists, like some would recommend to fix it with the shrink wrap modifier and basically like just to take the vertices and pull them a bit up. Yeah. And let's wait. Yeah, somehow it happens. And you can see uh, it, fix, it can fix, actually, the problem from the outside. You don't see the problem from the outside of the mesh that well. But actually, in the cavities, the problem gets worse, because the subdivision surface gets further from, from your surface, right? So what if we could just find another solution? And that is, like, kind of take the vertices so that they go into such positions that the subdivision surface fits your original scalp. And so I was thinking, like, oh, could this be done? And for example, also for low poly, let's say we try to think about a case where we don't need subdivision surface, we just want a nice low poly object, then it also makes sense to offset the vertices a bit and kind of bet uh, get a better pronounced shape, silhouette. I don't know how about you, but for me, that this makes sense. And I was thinking if, if there is such tool that does this, right? And sincerely, like, I didn't find it. I think. I checked like many retopology tutorials, also different other tools that people use, like Topogan or other, other tools. And I didn't find this kind of feature for offsetting vertices in this way. So, uh, and I also thought like, maybe it's in Blender, right? Maybe after this talk, somebody from the crowd comes to me and tells me, hey, 
This is in Blender since Blender 2.6, and it's in this menu that is in upper right left corner. And if you click the button twice, then you get this menu, and then you, there you can switch it on. I didn't find it, so I set on to try to develop a tool that would actually do this. And I also teach in a car company, like they are designing cars in Blender, and they are doing quite a lot of retopology, and they need like a nice curvature, so that's how also I came back to this idea, because it has been in my head for many years. And I found out it is doable. So here you can see like this new tool that I'm developing, and uh, you can see that actually like it's possible to match the surfaces quite precisely. And it's basically like inverting the subdivision, right? Ch checking the offsets. And there is an interesting tool, like now you can see it, like for example, on a character where I just do extrusions, that if you move one vertex in the subdivision surface modifier, right, and move it up, for example, the surface on the next neighbor vertex moves too, right? So if you kind of fix it on one vertex, and you, you screw up the other ones. So uh, the error or the fix you make on it propagate. So the, what is interesting on it, then you are running basically something like a simulation, like a closed simulation, because uh, always one vertex, vertex next is influenced, right? So this new tool actually can also influence neighboring vertices, depending on your setting. And it can also run in real time, like a simulation while you are modeling. So while you are modeling, you can kind of uh, use this snapping to, uh, to get immediately the results you want. And then you can kind of save on topology or like see if you really need to add more topology for the subdivision surface. Yeah. I will give it a second. Here you can see trying me on a basically just a random downloaded asset from the internet. So sorry, this is not my artwork. It's from one of the artists who upload to Blender Kit. And you can see uh, it's kind of correcting all the time with the green arrows. It's showing it. Yeah, and I was waiting for this slide because this shows clearly like the difference be between the classical system, where this is with shrink wrap modifier on, right? So, so, and if I switch it off, then you can see like the, the difference in the error between these two approaches, and it's kind of in millimeters or something. It's, it's uh, the, this color coding that's just a geometry node setup that does this. Okay, and so this just works, and I also thought about like what uh, this algorithm could, could do of other stuff because it kind of influences also other tools or other processes you need to do with 3D. For example, Blender has unsubdivide feature in the Decimate modifier, you might know it. And you might also know it uh, reconstructs the original topology of the model. So it kind of shows you how the friend who sent you the file or your friend yourself from the path who applied the modifiers and uh, kind of throws the possible changes. Uh, you know, uh, and now you can see the topology, but you don't get the original shape, right? So I tried again with the uh, to if I could, for example, make a new better unsubdivide tool, and turn, uh, turns out it's possible. And. This example uh, shows me actually trying like how precise the algorithm is because I thought like okay it's kind of a bit iterative algorithm so I, I didn't expect it to be precise but I realized that the precision can be up to the decimal numbers that Blender can show me so it's actually like in Blender numbers it's precise this tool that, that's what something I was surprised with and yeah that's about it and last thing to show you is that uh, I was thinking also on about another thing that while modeling, you know, and you, when you are creating a new model with subdivision surface, like every loop you add is changing the shape. That's logical, and most of the time it's something you want to do, right? But sometimes you just want to, in organic modeling or whatever, you want to add geometry and loops and you need them on one side of the mesh, and on the other side of the mesh, you just want to keep your curvature. You, you want to keep the sh same shape, right? So 
uh, it turns out like if you just make a shadow copy of the mesh you are just doing and switch this on for, for a while, then you can actually add new geometry. And uh, as you can see, like the curvature then kind of compensates and doesn't change if you, if you add the geometry. Yeah. I will give it a while because this example shows it nice. Yeah, now it's nicely visible what it does. And that's about it. It's quite simple. This talk was quite short because we are at the finish. But I was excited about it. And maybe, like, if you know that this, this tool in Blender exists already, like, come to me, like, 10 minutes after the talk, please, like, so that I can have, like, 10 minutes of joy. And <clears throat> also, yeah. And I'm sorry for that. It's not yet released. It will be soon, like, in weeks. And you will find it on GitHub and also probably on Blender Kit site or wherever. And that's about it. If you want to contact me, I will be here, of course, with this T-shirt. And um, if I got you interested, like in uh, in this, and uh, yeah, we have also a Blender Kit community meetup that is tomorrow at two o'clock in Sigroom. So we're invited to come there. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs>